Welcome everybody. I am Bill Courtright and thank you for joining me today on this episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast, Living Right with Bill Courtright, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress management. Hello and welcome back to another week of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am here as always with the super millennial David Barreto. How you doing, son? Good as always. How you doing? Doing great, man. I'm excited about this week. This week, we are going to focus on career. So today on Motivational Monday, we will talk about purpose. Tuesday's health huddles will be interesting because we're going to talk about performance. And we're going to get back into stress. And this week's health huddle spotlight will be on adrenal health. Wednesday's meeting of the minds. It will be on career transition, giving you tools to build your personal plan. Connection Thursday. We're going to talk about working in flow and connection. Friday's book study. We will be continuing Eckhart Tolle's Power of Now. So you ready, David? We're going to talk about career today. Let's do it. So the definition of career is an occupation or profession, especially one requiring special training followed as one's life work. So I ask, how many of us are working in jobs or have a career that is tied to one's life work? Right? You laugh, right? right? And I ask, as we progress through life, does our life work change? And what the hell does this all mean? Right? My career has been interesting. It spanned three decades. And it's been in the wellness field. It has taken me from medicine to diet and exercise, back to medicine, to coaching, consulting, to becoming an entrepreneur, to becoming a professional speaker, a best-selling author, and now a pretty crappy podcaster. But I'm working on it, you know? This, is, this career of mine has literally taken me around the world. I've had opportunities to work in four different continents in the world, and now my career is allowing me the freedom to actually build my own events. And to all of this, I say, so what? <laughs> it, just, it really is, you know, this is why oh, Bill's on his, on his pedestal, right? No. See, a career or a job, and this is my take on this, and I've been coaching for 20 years. Before they called it coaching, I was coaching, you know. A career or a job that doesn't allow you to grow as a person, it doesn't allow you to shift your consciousness, is like having a 500-pound cage that you are dragging up your mountain wrapped behind you. That's what it's like. So when looking at work, we must ask ourselves, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? It's important that your work is something that allows you the opportunity to serve. Do you agree with that, super millennial? Yeah. Now I ask sure. you the question. Serve who? You. Absolutely. Whoa. <laughs> yes. That's it. This career or work, the opportunity to serve, is not about serving anyone else but you. You have to understand the question is this. Now I want to put in some facts. Let's talk about working for the man. The question is, do you hate your work? If we look at the average Joe, we'll call him average Joe, let's say they work 40 hours a week, and let's say from the age, they work from the ages of 20 to 65. And let's say they get two weeks vacation a year, okay? The average Joe will have worked a total of 90,000 360 hours of his life working for the man. Here are some other disturbing facts. 80% of people are dissatisfied with their jobs. 80%. 25% of employees say their work is their main source of stress. And 40% say their job is very or extremely stressful. Couples 
in which one partner spends 10 plus hours more than a, than, than a usual work week, the divorce rate is twice the average rate. I know. <laughs> On the average, Americans hold seven to eight different jobs before age 30. I think I'm at six. Uh, you're going. You're, you're going to get. <laughs> hopefully you're done. Hopefully you're yeah. done, right? More than 13 million working days. 13. Now listen to the words that they're saying. I'm telling you. 13 million working days are lost every year because of stress-related illness. Each year, the average American spends 100 plus hours commuting to work. 10,000 workers per year drop dead at their desks, desks as a result of 60 to 70 hour work weeks in Japan. This phenomenon is called karoshi. <laughs> karoshi. I, I, I know. I just think, I just think, you know, I just, it's perspective. I just, just picture. This, yeah, oh. done. Done. I'm done. Uh, uh, can you get uh, uh, Joe off his desk? That's now? not what we mean when we say turn off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Women make only 77.5 cents for every dollar that a male earns, that men earn. Nearly half of America gained weight at their current job. 28% have gained more than 10 pounds uh, and 13% have gained more than 20 pounds. 64% of Americans canceled vacations last year. A third of them did it for work-related reasons. In the U.S., workers take an average of 50% of their vacation days. They, they, they take off. They, they cancel it. 50%. That means that most of the U.S. gives up about 50% time of, of the time that they are legally allowed to have off. 25% of people check into work hourly while on vacation via email and phone. 59% said they check work during traditional holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving. Basically, work is everywhere. While researching this episode, and it changed everything because I had a thought of how I wanted to do this week and it just changed as I started researching it. I realized I have lived my life in a bubble. I've just been in a bubble. I was just telling you, you were going by and you go, what do you mean? I go, you'll see. So I have basically built my career and I have worked on my terms my entire life. That's it. And what I mean by this is that I have built a career that is completely aligned to my values and purpose. See, coaches talk all the time about finding our purpose, our why, and our values. But honestly, I'm going to tell you guys from my heart, most of this talk is what I would call surface talk. They're doing it because they think that's what you do as a coach. See, my career has been built upon a single purpose with an evolving mission. And my even my values have changed as I have shifted. So let me go over my history a little bit and that's what this we're gonna work on this week. When I sat with the school counselors when I was making a decision what to do with my life, they made it clear to me that my testing scores showed I would be a good laborer or civil servant. That's what they told me. And so, and I didn't disagree with them. I really didn't, you know, where I came from and my grandfather worked hard. I was raised in a little town and the big thing was to get into the right paper mill. I, I didn't like disagree. So it was between becoming a police officer or a mailman. That was my choice. So when I, so when I lost the weight and I lost the weight before I started school, you know, I was then going in and I went into police science. That's why I said, I'll become a cop. And I hated it. I did not want to be a cop. But for the first time in my entire life, I was doing really well in school. I never studied before. So I, I was doing well. And then I went to some new counselors. Now, these are college counselors, a little different. And I retested. And they told me, 
I would make a good police officer. <laughs> so, so I wanted to go into the medical field. That's what I told him. I wanted to go into the medical field. I was so into it because I had lost the weight and I was living this new life. And I was with, you know, Dan. And Dan was teaching me, man, nutrition and stuff you never heard of. But more importantly, I wasn't only learning it. I was living it. So I knew what Dan was teaching me was the truth that I wanted everybody to know. Right? So the counselor, when I said I wanted to go to the medical field, didn't laugh at me. But the look on her face was, that's impossible. So my next stop, because I am who I am, was to my local recruiter. <laughs> you know, guess what? Another test. <laughs> just, you're getting tested. I told them I wanted to go in the medical field. And they said... <laughs> You'd be a good police officer. No, they didn't tell me that. <laughs> they, they, they actually committed me, you know, this side. They, they talked me in and they convinced me. You can go in as a corpsman and you'll be kind of the medical field, right? Nobody ever told me that the corpsman would be linked to the Marines, but that's another story as I go on, all right? But they also, there was an understanding in this and they were looking for people and they were given a lot of school that I would get advanced schooling and I would be able to go into medicine. So I was now, at this point in my life, I was very deep into my bodybuilding. And I was learning so much about nutrition and training and supplements and even about hormones and things like that. I was learning so much. And you got to figure, this is 1980, 81, something like that. And so my mission was set in my head to, to go out and teach the world what I was doing and to make sure they understood that diets don't work. You gotta remember, I'm coming off a guy who lost 100 pounds three times and been on all kinds of diet, I've been dieting since I was nine. So that was my mission. So the Navy was my ticket, but God was my pilot. Because <laughs> here's how it happened. I go to boot camp, and nobody prepares you for boot camp, anybody who goes in, just so you know. I thought I was in good shape, and I guess I was. I became the athletic petty officer in, my, in, in everything. And because I, I was in such good shape. Now, <laughs> you're talking about a guy who was 278 pounds like a year and a half before that, or maybe two years before that, I think that. So that was kind of cool. And so that was my first time really training people and training other people. And it was my job to get the whole company into shape. Then I get out of boot camp. Actually, there was two boot camps. I had to go to Marine boot camp too, but that's a long story. They forgot to tell us that. Uh, <laughs> Oh, by the way, congratulations. You now go to the Marines. Oh, okay. But it was cool. I enjoyed it because it was all physical. I loved it. <laughs> so then I go to core school and they bring me back to Great Lakes. And, and for those that know, that's in Chicago. And I lived in Wisconsin and I wanted to join the Navy to see the world. So they put me in core school in Great Lakes. But they said, it's only school. It's only going to be a six months. So you'll be fine. Okay. So then I go through school. And in school, again, in a classroom, I was okay. But when they did anything that was as workshops or things like that I thrived I was like I could do anything for some reason it was natural talent for me and so then I put in and where do you want to go I want to go to San Diego I want to go to Guam I want to go someplace around the world and they, the, the orders come in you're stationed at Great Lakes <laughs> so I literally walked across the street to the hospital and when I say God was my pilot I landed in the most perfect situation for the, for the mission that I had. And my mission was to really teach people the truth about diets. And when I landed in there, I landed with the perfect doctors, the perfect scenario, the perfect everything. And I got to practice medicine. And I got to keep going to school and keep learning. So leaving the Navy was not easy for me. But that was my first real, I guess, job, career, right? I had jobs in high school, but I wouldn't count them. And leaving me wasn't easy because I had the opportunity to become a doctor. That's how good I was at what I did. And But my dream was to teach what I lived, and I didn't see doctors really doing my mission. So I walked away. And I said, see, my purpose became very clear during this time. And it was to motivate Educate and inspire people to live their highest life. This person, this purpose would become shortened to raising energy. That's it. And super millennial, what's my purpose today? To raise the, the state of the entire planet. Raise the energy. It hasn't changed. You see, 
I have the same purpose that back then that I live today. And in fact, this is the purpose I was born with. So here's what I tell everybody out there. Purpose, your true purpose is not given to you. Because what if I had really good test scores and they told me you should go to medical school? You know, mm -hmm. because I had horrible test scores, they didn't tell me that. I would have probably went to medical school. And how many doctors, and you've been with my business long enough, a dozen, would you say, that I coach, right? <laughs> that just that being doctors. Don't want to be doctors, <laughs> right? But yet, that was their career that's supposed to be giving them this fulfillment of their life. And so purpose, true purpose is not given to us. It's discovered within us. It's one of the most important things we do in coaching. In shift coaching, one of the things that we do is we want to dig down and find out what is your spiritual true purpose, the purpose that you were born with. You, Every single person, every human being was born with a purpose. That means these are the talents that you're supposed to bring to the world. And when you discover your purpose, there's nobody more important to serve than you. If your purpose is to write a book and you're working in a computer lab, well, then maybe you need to leave your computer lab and go write the book. you got to know this. So here's something I will also tell you, that purpose and mission are two completely different things. The purpose is what you're born to do. The mission is the work. So my early mission was to teach people that diets don't work. The truth. I wanted to teach the truth. I wrote books. I did speaking. Whatever it was to teach the truth. My next mission was to change the way medicine was practiced. And I started this by working in, uh, in Peru, working in Panama, working in Philly, coming back with the last clinics that we did elite, proving that medicine could be practiced with a wellness edge. And now my mission has shifted again, and it's to shift the state of the planet. That's my mission. But my purpose is absolutely the same. So values are also incredibly important. you got to discover your purpose. But you also need to discover, and this is again what we do through coaching, are what are your real core values, not the values that you were culturally programmed with, not the values that tell you what you should do, right? See, why do you need to know this? Because it's the values are the deepest programs in the cage and they will drive or stop every action you take. Most people don't know their values, but yet they're still in the cage and they live their tribe's values. And so in my early years, I'd been doing this. I started personal development when I was in my 20s, right? So that's 36 years. Wealth was a very key value for me, and it served me well. I wanted to build wealth. As I've grown and shifted, wealth has gone to service. Now, service is a value for me. And so it drives my action. How can I serve? How can I serve somebody? But there's values that have never left. Freedom. Huge value for me. If I if if something's going to take away my freedom, I don't do it. Love, huge value. If I don't love it, I don't do it. Peace, huge value. If somebody's working with me and it's not peaceful, I'm not staying. It doesn't mean there's not problems. Remember, mm -hmm. there's a difference. Peace is that inner feeling. If I'm working with somebody in lower energy, it doesn't work for me because freedom, love, peace are core values of mine. And they have driven my career since I was back in the Navy. And that's why he can deal with me. He loves me. It's well, <laughs> I love you. I have to love you, they tell me, because you're you're now related to me. No, I do. I love you because you, you're a young me is what you are. But here's a value. Health is one of my values. Well, it became a value when I was 20 years old and got diagnosed with diabetes. If you think making a lot of money and building businesses is success, I tell you, success is Health, it is, because you can have all the money in the world, and if you can't enjoy it or have the energy to enjoy it, what good have you done? 
You've done that. You've done done nothing for you. You notice how I started this thing, right? It's about you. It's not about everybody else. It's about you. And it's so important because as you raise, the planet raises. So health is a value of mine. It's been early, and that's what's kept my weight off. And that's what's continued to key to my success because I keep on learning. I never stop growing. So this week, I am David and I are going to give you some answers to transition into the new year. And we want you to start finding your purposeful career. And hopefully, we can give you the tools and the courage to pursue this activity. See, career, you spend so many years of your life at work. And if you're going to go there and work's going to make you sick and stressed out, get the hell out of there. Get out. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, we know entrepreneurs have to work 60, 70 hours a week. That's what the stats show us to be successful. But here's the thing. If you're aligned to your purpose and you understand values and you understand the cage and the things that we teach here at Stress Mastery, work is awesome. My challenge is, and we'll talk about it this week, is the base purpose of self. And then there's base purpose of family. You can have a job working as a janitor, and you can be on purpose. That means that you're working in peace, love, and health. No matter what your job is, what are you here to do? What are you here to do? Career is such an important topic that I realized I can't just throw this out there like fluff. I can't. I've got to get bring you guys some real things that can help you change and shift. Because if you're in the wrong career, I guarantee you that's a life wasted. And you got to have courage. So these doctors I'm talking about that are all of a sudden changing their careers in their 50s after 26 years of medicine, you think that takes some courage? Heck yes, but it also takes planning. I'm going to talk about that on Wednesday. How do you transition into what you're supposed to do? How do you know what you're supposed to do? Every single human being has a built-in purpose. There's a reason we came to this lifetime to do something. We all have talents and we all have something we're supposed to do. Super millennial, anything on that? No, I'm excited to see where this goes. You're quiet. Yeah, you're because, quiet. Because mm-hmm. everything you said, it's it's kind of like what I'm living through now. Because yeah. I'm still new to it. But it, I know there's a lot of people going through it. They ask, how can I, why do you work six, seven days a week? Because I love it. It's not, yeah, it's I'm not, not working. I, people don't get that, right? It's, and we have freedom. Now, here's the thing. People think, well, do you work hard? Well, I put in a 20-hour workday the other day, didn't I? 20 straight hours. Now, the thing is, I don't say that I'm not bragging about putting in time because now I take vacations and I travel. I had to learn balance in my life. I made a lot of mistakes. And I want to teach you guys about those mistakes because I'm very driven. But I'm dri- I've am i always been driven since day one with a distinct purpose. So I've always done what I love. Even in the Navy, I did what I loved. I loved my experience in the Navy. I, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. But God drove that thing because if I had gotten what I wanted, I would have never dropped into that opportunity I dropped into because there just happened to be a huge shortage of doctors. And guess what I had to do? I had to be the doctor. So I had to learn things that were outside my scope because it needed somebody to be a practitioner. So that's how I got into everything. But it also allowed me the freedom to research. I did anything I wanted to do. And I had the entire organization behind me because I was the best at what I did because I loved what I did. Make sense? Makes sense. So that's it for today's show. Our mission is to create a shift in the planet. Now you understand it a little bit more. You can join us on this mission by simply go on the bottom of the links and like, share, and subscribe this show. Please send it out there. Get it to a friend. If you're in a company... One of the things you will hear this week, you've heard the, the, the things on stress. One of the things I do in a company is I can align purpose and values and wellness built around stress for your company. This is what I've done for the last 15 years. Because if you don't understand how to get your employees to work that way, then what's going to happen is your bottom line is going to suffer. 
and you as an owner or as a manager will also suffer. So if you want any exclusive content, go to livingrightwithbillcourtright.com and let's get out of here, David. As always, until next time, stay inspired and on purpose. <laughs> <laughs>